So we're now going to hear from Lynn Alderson. She is a second wave radical lesbian feminist, founder of member of Sister Right Bookshop Collective and Trouble and Strife Radical Feminist magazine. In the last few years, um, Lynn has been working with Labour Women's Declaration to influence party policy, also with other gender critical feminists in other parties. And she's going to be looking at party policies and manifesto commitments. So thank you so much, Lynn, for uh, sharing your expertise with us. And thank you so much for Sister Right in Trouble and Strife as well, <laughs> that many of us remember. OK, over to you. I'm just going to run through some of the basic positions that are uh, expressed in the manifestos of the main parties, first of all, so that we get a grip on exactly how far they're saying that they'll go along the uh, gender identity line. Um, so firstly, uh, the Liberal Democrats, um, they are supporting self-identification, just straightforwardly. Uh, but not just for trans-identified people, but for non-binary uh, identifying people too. There's no indication about how such a, an identity, which isn't even based in material reality, can be actually incorporated into law. The, um, it's, it, it, there's a lack of detail about what they intend to do, but when they say they're supporting self-identification, they mean that they will be supporting laws to that effect. They're also um, talking about the uh, removal of the spousal veto. Now, for, for those of you who don't understand what that is, that's a, a piece of the Gender Recognition Act, which protects the wives and families of men who want to legally change their sex. And it just gives a pause for, for them to have a think about whether they want to stay or leave or have the marriage annulled since the marriage is no longer what it was when they agreed to take it. So several of the parties are saying that they will remove that, which is a, it's a, a relatively small thing in terms of how many uh, people it affects, but it's immensely cruel to say that that should be removed when these families, these women and families are in such extraordinary difficult circumstances. So they don't give any um, indication of how they're going to do all of this. Um, but as an overall approach, it's pretty disastrous vis-a-vis -vis women's rights. Um, there's no concessions to women that I can see. And, uh, you know, as Paula has said, there are women in each of these parties who've been fighting tooth and nail on this. And um, certainly none of us have been treated that well. But the women in the in the um, Liberal Democrats have have been treated really badly. There is a, an organisation called Liberal Voice for Women that have been trying to raise these issues for a number of years now, and there's now a declaration as well. So um, that's just basically the Liberal Democrats. The Greens are very similar in the sense that they're also uh, unequivocally supporting self-identification. Um, and again, for non-binary people. So this is um, this is the completely this is the, the most extreme end, I'd say. If we look at what the Greens did in Scotland, uh, they went into an agreement with the Scottish National Party in order to support the party uh, which needed more parliamentary votes. And there were three things that the Greens asked for in return for that support. And one of those three things was reform of the Gender Recognition Act. Now, um, for a party that is meant to be focused on environmental issues, and I, I think we need a party of that kind, um, it's extraordinary that they would put this so high in their agenda, they are, they are uncompromising, and I'm sure there's some green women in here who will tell you about how badly they have been treated as well. So. Um, you know, uh, in a sense, they're the kind of extreme men, I think. They're, they're probably the most extreme, although when you see Ed Davey talking about women with penises, which he seems perfectly happy to do, then, you know, you just feel that the whole party is a loss, really. But they don't give up. We don't give up. Any of us in these parties don't give up. We keep on fighting. 
So they don't mention the Equality Act, they don't mention safeguarding, they don't mention any of the conflicts, and, and um, they speak about fairness. But um, what they say and what they do, they certainly have not been fair to the gender critical women in their party. And we know that there's a number of court cases coming up in relation to the Greens and women who are challenging them because of the way they've been treated. Uh, and, and to be honest, they seem perfectly willing to almost bankrupt their party rather than to make any concessions to these women's rights. So, you know, it is a, it's an extraordinary situation with them. The uh, situation in Scotland, vis-a-vis -vis that particular reform, uh, there, there was a, a massive uh, response from women in Scotland who, who fought magnificently. Um, they were ignored. They would not be allowed into um, consultations. They, it, you know, it was a, it was a real um, carve up essentially, and that piece of legislation did go through. It was then stopped by the UK government, who said that it impacted upon the Equality Act, and therefore, you know, they could not do it because that was a piece of UK wide, legis wide legislation. So that's where it sits at the moment. Now, um, the Conservatives, they've done the best of the statements um, that any of the parties have, have made. Uh, it's a clear statement. It says that biological sex is a reality. It says that they will clarify sex in the Equality Act um, to make sure that it means biological sex. Um, they will keep the whole business of gender recognition to the UK government rather than letting it go to the devolved nations, that's Wales and Scotland and Northern Ireland. Um, that they will make guidance in education statutory and they will allow parents the right to see what their children are being taught, that they will implement the CAS review, and indeed we shouldn't forget that they commissioned the CAS review, um, and that they will reinforce single-sex accommodation rights in hospitals and in care. And just to remind people what the CAS review was, that was a piece of independent, high-level research that looked at all of the work that's taking place around young gender non-performing people and the kind of treatments that they were being given and exposed to. And it was a deeply, well, it wasn't shocking to us because we'd been saying for a long time that this needed to be examined and stopped. And um, it has been, um, it has been, I think, hugely impactful because it made it clear that there was no uh, real evidence that the kind of regimes that these kids were being put through were in any way uh, effective. They didn't uh, take into account the children's, the young people's situations. There was no recognition of factors like autism or depression or any other issues they may have had. The affirmation model that was used at Tavistock, um, you know, was, was one which was also being, I think, adopted by most of the counselling organisations within the country. So it was quite a serious situation. And as Paula said, we've all been very concerned about young lesbians, young gay men who are being pushed into those regimes. Um, and there was no notice taken to leave transitioners either. So um, the research showed that this was a really serious medical scandal, which is what we've been saying, that the ordinary uh, standards uh, of treatment were not being met just ordinary standards, really, that they would apply to other things. So um, the Tavistock has been disbanded and the CAS review has recommended that the uh, treatments um, and processing of uh, these young people should be devolved to different regional centres and put within a more holistic framework so that it isn't just isolated in this way and focused on the affirmation model. So we're very glad to see, uh, you know, uh, parties um, commit to implementing that because it's actually got much wider implications. We'll come on to those a bit in a moment than just uh, those specific ones. So um, that's that's good stuff from the Conservatives. And I will just make one <laughs> comment about that, which is that they have had 14 years to, to sort some of this out. 
And I think that we need to pay attention to the fact also that their leadership is likely to change in the next little while, whatever happens at the election. Um, I don't think that the Conservative Party is secure on these issues. We know, and some of those Conservative women can speak for themselves, they've had a right royal battle to get this through. And, I, you know, I admire those women enormously and I think they've been very effective. I don't think it means that we've just got a safe haven in the Conservative Party either. OK, um, all of the parties have been subjected to uh, lobby groups who've been you know, working not just within the parties, but across Parliament. Um, and it isn't just the uh, obvious ones. I think there's a very strong uh, lobby group of gay male MPs as well that work across party on some of these issues. So there's a great deal that's been happening for a number of years and now, and we are always fighting in reaction to that rather than in a in in a, in um, a more positive way really what's in the labor party manifesto then they will support single sex exemptions in the equality act um it doesn't uh look at the conflict between that and other 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 areas of their policy but it's some a commitment they've made for a long time and the equality act they see as theirs they don't want to see it damaged um, it was the last thing I think that the Blair government brought in. They have backed off from self-ID, which was in the last manifesto. And they do have no mention of non-binary identities, which is another good thing. But it does um, propose some reform of the GRC process. We're concerned about that. We're concerned about uh, how easy they will make it. It's not clear. I think it's deliberately not clear because they're not sure yet exactly what they're going to do with that. And there's also a ban on conversion therapy in there. And as I said, that conflicts with CAS. We want young people to have uh, the best uh, and most neutral counselling that they need. So um, they know all of those things are problematical, uh, but they still have gone ahead and put them in there. They have also committed to implementing the CAS report. That's a very good thing. Um, and Starmer said on t uh, TV just yesterday, I think, that it does mean full implementation. So they will in experience a lot of conflict within these different areas of policy. There's no mention of the spousal veto, which they have previously said they would, uh, would, they would remove. So that's quite hateful. That's quite helpful. And then there's hate. There's a little bit gone in there about sexual orientation, adding to the different kinds of um, aggravating factors that can be attached to crime. There's no mention of sex, um, and I think that's uh, that's that's a subject that none of the parties are touching really, because if they pick that up, um, having to take measures uh, around um, you know sex as a hate crime would just completely overwhelm them. There is, just very briefly, a very positive program on male violence to women. It includes rape course, courts, specialist support for women from 999 centres up to trial, action on stalking, um, making allowing women to know the identity of their online stalkers, making spiking an offence. So there's a lot of that. So go and have a look at it. Essentially, they have shifted. Um, to which degree uh, we can we can say how they'll implement some of these things when when they're in in government if they do win the election, you you can't say. I think it's not a great priority for them. I don't think it will be top of their list. I think with equality work, the race equality uh, uh, amendments to the to to those acts are going to be more of a priority for them. I suspect they will do one of the things that they often do, which is to kick it into the long grass if it proves difficult. So that's the um, that's the background to this. Um, I, I, I need to I need to stop now. There's lots more I could say. I'm going to stay through to the uh, breakout room. So if anybody wants to go on talking about this, then um, you know I'm happy to do that. I won't say tell anybody how to vote, of course. But the campaigns by Sex Matters, Women's Right Network, Labour Women's Declaration and others are asking you all to try and make sure that you know what your candidate's position is, because the, the candidates may well not have the same position as their party. 
So make sure you know and make sure they know that you care about it and actually, you know, get in there. If they're on the doorstep, tell them what, what it that it matters to you.